So now Devastore 2, we'll take a look at this. A multiband distortion unit. Uh, this is one of the newer plugins from D16. And you notice the GUI is slightly different and there's a couple of extra controls. And uh, this one in particular, this GUI button here, the magnifying glass, well, very welcome addition because I find the the GUI of some of the other plugins, the D16 plugins, not the instruments, but more like the plugins we've been discussing in this course, the GUI can be quite small. Uh, you can actually increase the skin size now. So I can just click this button and then I can select big. And uh, it's much nicer, I think. Uh, you can see it a lot better. So um, just change the GUI size there. And uh, a couple of, you can access the MIDI CC map here as well load or save a MIDI CC map. And uh, then we have some uh, quality settings as well. So we have draft normal high or ultra for the real time quality or offline quality. We have draft normal high or ultra again. And presumably, you know, draft is gonna be lesser quality, but less CPU hungry and you know, ultra is going to be higher quality, but more CPU hungry. And then these two are, you know, somewhere in between. And uh, so I'm assuming you wouldn't want it on anything but ultra for your offline quality. So you're preserving all the quality when you're bouncing offline and then real time quality. If you want to save up some CPU, you could have draft or normal. And uh, so some, yeah, some very welcome new features. And I'm assuming that all the newer D16 plugins will have these same features. And also I'll mention before we get stuck into the rest of the interface, we do a preset browsing and options video in this course. And I mentioned that the options and preset browsing and storing, what have you, are the same for all the plugins bar Sigmund and so Decimor, Fazotan, Redoptor, Sinterus and Toriverb. And I said Devastor was the same and it is for Devastor 1, but Devastor 2 uh, they've updated this as well. So now when you hit the options button, these uh, same options that we have bottom right, but these are default settings. So I'm assuming that this is for the uh, real time and offline quality and these MIDI CC and the GUI. This is for this current preset, this current instance of Devastore 2 that we have loaded. But if we hit the options here, press, this is default settings. So in real time we could have as draft to save CPU and offline we could have as ultra and then the user interface we could always have as big and I'm assuming that now these default settings have been changed so anytime I load up Devastore we will remember these settings that we've set in here and also you can access some MIDI settings here the MIDI CC map so you could browse and load up a MIDI CC map in there and also the preset browsing is slightly different so I play this little drum loop that we've got here a later weight loop and so we can still do the same where we with the other pr pr the other D16 plugins we browse through we go next and previous and what have you uh, a couple of different options on the top so these are double function buttons here so if I hit command con uh, control on a PC and then it becomes in it so it initializes the state of Devastore 2 so you're working on this sound changing some stuff, you can just in initialize it very quickly there. Or say I go to this patch, this 303 Raws patch, or oh, preset, sorry. Start changing some stuff. Go on, you know what, lights it how it was initially when we first laid it up. We can reload this here, hit Command or Control on a PC, Command on a Mac, and then click on this next reload button, and it will reload this 303 Raws preset. Like that and then we have this browse button and so now the preset browsing is slightly different and you have these filters now so we're on the factory set so I can have these filters so you can start filtering stuff so I could say look I want to look for a distortion unit mild distortion with uh, maybe for a bass sound and then it loads up all of these it gives me all these options Or I can go, right, okay, I'll have, uh, you know, something intense, a dynamic shaper, not a distortion, dynamic shaper, uh, intense and subtle, guitars and drums. 
and it loads up all these presets. So quite nice filtering system to start looking for different presets you might have want to load up. And yeah, loads of nice presets in here. If you have no filters on here whatsoever, it just loads. These are all the Devastore 2 presets that we can have. Uh, and then we also have this um, edit mode, but we can't edit the factory presets. We go to this user here and we can edit user presets. So I haven't got any at the moment. So let's go to this user here. Oh, let's just store a um, let's save a, a patch here. So we'll save something new. So I hit Command or Control on this Browse button, and then you can save a preset. So for this Johnny preset, and now I've saved that, and if we go to our user presets, here's my preset, and now I can. Highlight this, go to edit, and I can add tags to this. So I can say it's a distortion, a mild distortion, and it's for drums. And go out of edit mode, and now that those tags are associated with this preset, which is quite nice. I go back into edit mode, I can delete this preset, uh, I can import other presets, or I can export this one. So um, a couple of new options, and I said in the we did a dedicated video on the options and browsing and patch browsing and what have you saving and stuff. And I mentioned that they're all the same, including Devastore, but that was when we were doing the video on Devastore 1. We've come back and done a new video because Devastore 2 is now out. So, and these new, these features are slightly different in here. So now let's get stuck in to what we have on this Devastore 2 multiband distortion unit. Um, we have this over here, Shaper, we have this dynamics control. So this is just dialing in compression from no compression to hard compression and anywhere in between. Uh, and then we have a preamp where we can drive the input. Let's turn this limiter on. And uh, we can drive the input into the distortion unit. And you notice when I drove it there, these lights start to LEDs start to flicker, indicating that you are clipping the signal. And then you have this threshold here. So this is the level at which the distortion will kick in. We'll go down to minus 48. Anything that exceeds this threshold will start getting distorted. And you can take this right up. Let's initialize this. So yeah. Threshold for the distortion, the dynamics as well. And then we have the shape, which affects the uh, distortion tone, really. Uh, and this is quite dependent on this here, this distortion function. If I click this, we have some various different types of clipper distortion functions. Uh, we've got various different names, hard clip. All have very different sounds. Crossover. And then this shape control, depending on the clipping curve, it will change the characteristics of the distortion. And then we get into these three filters, all have the same controls, so we have a cutoff, I turn down the volume of two and three. We have a cut off here, oh, it's off at the moment. So we have either low pass filter, band pass, high pass, or band reject. So high pass, sweeping anything, or low frequencies out, low pass, it's only gonna let low frequencies through. Band pass, it's just gonna be a frequency band that allows through, and band reject, it's gonna reject a band. And then this resonance or width. So for band reject and band pass, this is the width of the frequency band. And for high pass or low pass, this is the resonance rather than bandwidth. 
And yeah, we have volume for a volume control for each filter. So you can have any combination. And then you have this really interesting section here, signal routing. So um, the nine different types of routing setups that we can choose from here, varying from serial and parallel. So this setting here, what's happening is the sound is going through the three filters in parallel, so it's passing through them equally. And then it's going into this diode clipper section and then to the output. If I change the routing here to say this one, the sound is going through filter one and then going out filter one into the diode clipper section and then going through filter two and filter three in parallel. So it's passing through filter two and filter three. So serial through filter one. So the output of filter one and what happens in filter one is going to affect the input of this diode clipper and then filter two and filter three. And then we've got nine different setups. So at this one, it's going through the diode first. It's going through the diode clipper and then it's going into the three filters. And it's sending, it's splitting the signal here. As we can see, it's going parallel through filter one and filter two, and then it's also splitting the signal to filter three. So really interesting, and you get some very different results depending on which signal routing you have set up here. Uh, okay, parameters been changed. You want to save them before loading the preset. So I went to initialize it then. It's asking me now if I want to save it. So this is another new thing. So I hit no, I don't necessarily want to save that. That's pretty nice. And let's drive it again. Then we have this limiter here, which is quite nice. You start boosting that preamp, it's going to retain the signal level. Or if you start dipping it, it's going to retain the signal level so you get you get a nice constant level from the distortion because you're driving distortion you can get some quite wild levels sometimes and we have a dry wet mix for some parallel multiband distortion the devastore 2 is a really powerful distortion unit and has a great sound so you should really experiment uh, especially when you start playing around with the different distortion functions and uh, these different filter and dio clippers routing setups. You know, really clever. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that tutorial and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.